there's definitely something going on here. That's a massive gun position or whatever. These are, these are not stupid pipes, see here? These are riflings. There is a ladder up there. That, my friend, is a German World War II helmet. That is a machine gun belt and the ammunition they fed the machine guns with. Welcome to the History Hunter and welcome to our small explorers with the World War II time frame. We research, we travel and we find and share incredible World War II history with all of you out there. Today we're going to bring you back in time. I'm going to put it quickly here so you have some context. We are at a former German World War II fortress. The Germans came here, they established this important position so they could control the waterways in the area and they rigged up several huge 10.5 centimeter guns, 20 millimeter flak anti-aircraft gun positions all over, MG positions, trenches, barrack, tunnels, underground complexes, and one of the most incredible fire and control bunker that we have ever, ever laid our eyes on. And this is gonna be so exciting to share with all of you. This is part of the touching history tour that we were able to do due to your very, very kind support. And some of you even got to become historical with us out there. But are you ready? Let's go out and see what crazy stuff the Germans put up here at this German World War II fortress. On the Atlantic Wall, that was the fortification line from the top of Scandinavia to the bottom of France. Hitler decided to install tens of thousands of structures, and some of them are here, even today. That is a tunnel system that goes deep into the mountain, that is shut off, but you know what? There are so many other features that we will share with you here. The whole point of the Atlantic Wall was to protect the coastlines that the Germans kind of took and decided to say, we are here and we're here to stay. And even that little tiny piece of structure there is an important thing. It's actually held camouflage canvas that was stretched over the garages that the Germans installed here and used for the vehicles. So you can see a detail of the Atlantic Wall can be just a tiny little thing like that, or it could be a huge, gigantic gun position. It's just a matter of finding exactly the philosophy that the Germans implemented and then figuring out what they did and where they put all the installments. Suddenly, there is something really strange going on. Can you see that, Eagle Eyes, in front of us? It looks like a rock. What is that? So, we come over here. Could that be anything else than a rock? Well, let's see. That looks strange, doesn't it? Well. There you go. That is how easy you can spot a fortification kind of feature. Smack where the Germans had their coastal artillery. And this thing here, well, I have to be honest, I really can't tell you what it is. It looks like it's been modified after the war, but I think it was actually a uh, machine gun or a pack gun covered the whole area further down below us here. You guys know, spotted a pretty cool tunnel. So of course we cannot deliver boring stuff for you and tunnels are always exciting and we're just so curious about what the heck is down here because it looks to be like an extensive tunnel that seems to go up and down into the terrain here. And, uh, oh Lord. Okay, if you say A, you have to say B. And that's what we're doing here. <laughs> what on earth? Oh, it's a water reservoir. A massive water reservoir, can you see that? That is massive. You. you can even hear the echo in here. A huge water reservoir. And I guess that is not filled up today. Wow, that was a surprise. So I can feel some draft here. So it's very 
It's not humid, it's very dry actually. That was cool. So, coming through the tunnel here, seems like this goes up into the daylight. And something spectacular in there it seems. Just have to fix the microphone here. And it starts to come in from here. And there is a huge locked door there I can see. So I'm not gonna venture down there because that's just another way to get into this tunnel. Wow. That is a pretty substantial system. I think I wanna go up here just to see what's going on here. You know, I did so much to stay, you know, alive here and protect the cruise. Wow, there's definitely something going on here. That's a massive gun position or whatever. So, there's a door here leading into something and another tunnel here. Oh, wow. This is absolutely fantastic. And now I have to go all the way back to get eagle eyes. <laughs> wow, let's see. Locked door. The passageway here, which is probably the one that we saw. That is the original. Holy cow, what's going on here? Oh, that's a closed off room. I think this is the German part. Maybe they built something here post-war, I haven't got a clue. <laughs> oh my goodness. Ah uh, yeah, okay, we came from there. This looks to be the German stuff because of the wood and everything. Wooden door. What? What is that all about? Why is this wall put there? I don't know. <laughs> this was, this is insane up and down and in and out. All of these tunnels here, holy crap. It's a good start, huh? That goes up. Another room. You have got to be kidding me. This is uh, the German stuff, I think. Maybe communication, equipment, munition storage, I don't know. You gotta be kidding me. But how do I get back? <laughs> okay, I have to find Eagle Eyes. Never did I expect this. That was there. We're going down here. <laughs> wow. What a treat to start with. Enjoying that. And you can see here, soldiers would have come up into the terrain where the steps are and then go down into another tunnel system. And all of this was probably put up with uh, a lot of work from actually the German soldiers themselves. They, uh, locals were hired, often paid twice and two three times as much wages at regular salaries, but of course also forced laborers and stuff. But do take that into consideration that it's not just forced laborers or prisoners of war who built these. The Germans actually built a lot of them by themselves, by the RAD, Reich Arbeitsdienst, and a ton of German soldiers working to, to do all of this. Oh wow, up here we go. Wow, Elias went through the tunnel system. He was shocked and so am I. And here we are. This is the first position where the Germans initially installed a 10 centimeter coastal artillery gun. And you can really quickly figure out that the reason for that is that they needed to cover this straight here, this area here, all the way to in here. And that is specifically where they put that first 
10 centimeter gun and you can see it was installed on that little turntable and sometimes let me show you also this this is a machine gun uh, anti-aircraft gun position see that spigot for the machine gun attached it there so that is that and this is one of the entrances you could come out that was actually shot if you want to go to have a look there you can i guys no nope. so Around here, there would be a ring of metal. Um, you know, the degrees, mill radians around here. So you can quickly install the gun on the right direction. And then it would be just manual work. And you can see it cannot go 360 degrees, but it didn't have to because it didn't want to cover anything in, inland. So all it did have to cover was what you see out here. So mainly, mainly all the way from about here, all the way to there and that is basically the function of this gun position cool first gun position nailed it touching history yeah this is eagle Isis way of connecting with history this is his journey this is his idea and this is kind of his project so i want to say a massive thank you and thumbs up to all of you people who were so kind to give us some donations to get some fuel into the fuel tank and just go out and fulfill some of eagle Eyes's dream on this journey and have you got some of your dreams come true eagle Eyes? yes i have <laughs> i can promise you and one very special thing that i remember now is the uh lost gun yes where did it go I can promise you, you will enjoy this episode, but I want to say a massive thank you to all of you who helped us out to make this come true. If you take a look in the terrain here, absolutely everywhere, you can see they blasted running trenches. You see here, these are also near defense positions. And I think that that plateau used to have a searchlight right there and maybe a generator underneath there. And you can see, they really, really blasted straight through the mountainside to create these running trenches. And just imagine how much work that must have been, huh? To be here. But this was all about defending the, uh, the artillery position. If there would be enemy coming up here, you know, storming in in a commando raid in the night and coming up this way, the German soldiers could quickly just establish a near defense position right there in those trenches. These were originally casemates that was open. I believe the Germans built them and then post-war tragic things happened. They were shot by the local military that took over and this is so sad. It seems like they actually casted in the, uh, the gun. Is that really so? Oh my goodness. That is thoroughly sad to see. Let me show you here. These are, these are not stupid pipes. See here, these are riflings. You got to be kidding me. How is that possible? So that means that inside this casemate that the Germans built, there is now a gun fully encapsulated in concrete. That is so sad. Well, at least Eagle Eyes, we're touching history. Oh, <laughs> Definitely touching history. <laughs> but what a sad result that has become. Oh my goodness. I was not aware that they were here, but to see it like that, that is pure tragic. And I'm as impressed to see what could be down here into the forest here. Is that a Heck, eagle eyes. I think there's a massive bunker or something down there. Indeed, there is a huge something down there. That's like 10 meters down there. Can you see that? There's an entrance there. Be careful. How do we get down there? There you go. Wow. We've been walking and doing so much today. I had to charge the microphone several times for the camera and I had to walk with the charger on the microphone as well. So this is exciting. Oh no, is it just a pathway? 
I was hoping that it was a tunnel system or something. What on earth is this? See here? It actually looks like a bridge of some sort. Okay, let's go inside. Uh, this is very, very special. Why all this effort to create this thing here? I've never seen anything like it. Why all of this effort to do this concrete? I think they actually tried to make a room out of it. Can you see that? They actually tried to make a room out of it. They found out that the mountain goes here from there to there. And then they said, why don't we just cast concrete on top and create a room? And that's what they did. And I think they even started to fill it up, but they never ended the work. I can see some metal things going on there. And then, wow, what is that? Look at that. They integrated the terrain. Why didn't we see that stairway? Because we are blind. Oh no, that's shot. So there's definitely more here. This is unbelievable. I cannot understand how much work they put into this, but we did not know that this passage had a staircase. Then we could have, we didn't have to, oh, look at that. That is also shot. Then there's really something big inside this mountain, but we cannot access it. So I wonder what that is. You, each and every one of you on that list, you decided that you wanted to become historical. You guys and girls, you are now historical because you helped us to go out and find this. And of course, all of you who subscribe, comment and share and all that, we appreciate every one of you, all the Patreon team members, all the PayPal donors, but I promised for all of you who do something special for our trips on the PayPal or SuperSang thing, well, we just want to do this tiny little extra thing just for you. Super, super thank you to everybody on this list. Absolutely. And now, every time you watch this video, you can see that you were here and you helped us out to get to this place. So thank you for being with us. Exciting stuff. More here. And I have to say, I'm very surprised to see all the tunnels that are here. And suddenly, I can actually see another one there, you guys. And not just that. This here is a trench with something that goes here. So I'm not sure what that goes to, but that might lead up to the incredible fire and control bunker that is here. And that is another gun position. And I am so curious about what is going on down here. There's definitely an opening there. Can you see it? And I do think it's actually open. So we have to investigate that, Elias, huh? Okay. Let's go down and check it out. We are not sure about what we're seeing here. I do think I see a huge piece of concrete in the middle there. Oh, is it wood? I think it's a huge wooden door. Okay, can we move that? Oh, Elias, you have to come here and help me a little bit. Oh, tunnel system. Come on. Let's go in here, Elias. I'll hold it. I hold the door for you while you come through. Come on. Can you? Okay. Can you do it? I can see some light there, so it might not go too far. Uh, I'll just check it out and I'll come back to you. Okay. If I disappear, you can have my keys to the camper van and go home. That door is also kind of tilted, and it just leads that door actually. So it's a transportation tunnel. I'm gonna come up, Eagle Eyes. Yeah. So he's gonna shut me in and he's gonna get all the snacks that are in the camper van. He planned this all the time. <laughs> he's bursting of energy. And he said, Daddy, look at this thing here. Wow. That is so much rock work. And what do you think it is, Eagle Eyes? Gun. I think it's a gun position, but just look at the amount of brickwork and work is put into this and it's not bricks by the way it's rocks what? crushed rocks that I put into system with concrete and then they just 
kind of seal in everything that is in here and even an additional wall right there. Wow. Continue moving up. Continue moving up into the gun position. And this gentleman behind me here, he is pushing me, pushing me, pushing me. Yeah, it's almost the guy's too slow. Oh, I'm too slow, I know. Terrible Look at that. Slow. That's another one of the 10 centimeter gun positions. But I think there should be another casemate as well, but I don't know where that is. Yeah, but now we have four guns with that casemate. No, there are two casemates and four guns, you said. So? so I wonder where is the other one. And this is the base. This is cut down. And that is tragically what happened to most of the gear that the Germans had after the war. It was melted, recirculated, and it's not here anymore. This is where the wheel would have gone and then you could turn the gun and not there would be the middle radian. And when you see out here today, this was, oh, what is that? There's another one. <laughs> and there's something crazy going on in the forest there, you guys. Yeah, that's just a trench. What? No, 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 that's not a trench. I'm amazed to see this place, to be honest. Nevertheless, um, there was not one single tree during those days because they cut them down because they want to have full overview of this place. And at the same time, they strapped everything they had of camel canvas on top of each and every one of these positions. And that was to prevent that the Allies could come in here and bomb the heck out of them. And you can see here how easy it is to see pieces of the activity of the barracks. That is two rings around there. Definitely coastal artillery bricks. That is a very special feature that me and Eagle Eyes wanted to share with you. And that is so rare that we have just seen that once before in all our travels. Looks like a house, doesn't it? Yes. But what is it, Eagle Eyes? And command bunker. Fire and control bunker for the whole fortress. And that is Absolutely fantastic. Wait, this yeah. thing here was intentionally made like this so it could actually look like a house. And during the days when the Germans had it, it actually looked a little bit different than that, but it was even more resembling a house. And what it is, is a fire and control bunker. It's an observation post. And if you take away the modern kind of antennas and all of that, and you camouflage paint that, you know, in the right colors and on what they did, well, you would never guess that that would have a very, very important um, kind of um, uh, function here at the fortress. But that is what I did to try and prevent the Allies from bombing it. Because the Allies actually were considerate if they knew that could have the possibility to bomb civilians around the fortresses, guess what? They would actually hesitate and maybe hit another target. So a very clever way to actually hide the purpose of the structure. I just love this thing here. It's like an optical illusion. First glance, pilot coming in here hundreds of hours or oh, kilometers per hour, he would very quickly say, oh, that's a house, not get that. And that was the whole intention. Just these few seconds, that's the difference between uh, hitting it or leaving it. So you can see very typical, the opening of a fire and control bunker. But the main thing with this one is that everything is exposed and that's how they chose to do it. And uh, that's very bold, very, very bold, but also pretty clever if you ask me. Look, I'm touching history, Daddy. Absolutely. This was actually Eagle Ice's project. He spotted this from the ear. And he said, Daddy, what is that? And then the whole circle started and we feel that we are almost in a complete circle now. But look at that. That is the exit or the opening that you can look out of or from. And to know that I did this, this is amazing to see how a, that is very smart. Very, very smart. See that? That they are false. That is not a window, but it actually appears to be a window from, from the ear. And you can see that it's just kind of attached like that. <laughs> what a clever way to say this is a house. Unbelievable. 
Yes, that is an unbelievable location. And if you want to help us out to reach more locations like this, you know, we have this little super thanks feature here. Basically, your opportunity to help us to just get some gasoline into the camper van and then off we go. This was part of Eagle Eyes' history tour, the Touching History Tour. Thank you everybody who helped us out on that Super Thanks feature. Thank you everybody who donated to the PayPal thing. Thank you to our Patreon team members. And thank you, absolutely, each and every one of you, 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 who watch, subscribe and comment. It is because of you that we can go out and find and share great history like this. Well, um, there might be a little follow-up of this because Eagle Eye, he just accidentally stumbled upon something very, very unique there, but we're going to figure out if we can present that later. Nevertheless, very, very exciting place. And that's what your support is. It helps us to go out and find and share very special World War II history. And I think there's nobody else who does it the way that we do. Nevertheless, it's been a pleasure. Thank you, everybody. And uh, we will definitely see you out there in the next one.